Is it recording? Ooh wee! Welcome back to another Chef Sawyer Sunday. I got a great video for you guys today. All over the United States, mostly everywhere is starting to get kind of cold. We're moving into the fallish season. Today, we're preparing a autumn squash soup. You know, we really crave that soup. It gets your insides all nice and warm. So this is a great comfort food that doesn't take very much effort to prepare. You'll see I have many different types of squashes here. I have some pumpkins, butternut squash, some root vegetables like carrots, parsnips, turnips, uh, sweet potato, and this is all gonna make a nice, great, creamy bisque. To pair along with our soup, we're gonna have a great sandwich as well, because you know, there's no better combination than soup and sandwich. Ham, apple, and brie sandwich incoming. Stay tuned. And let's go ahead and break down these pumpkins. In order to start breaking down your squash, you're gonna need a nice heavy chef's knife. Something longer is more preferable because as you can see, these are pretty thick vegetables. So you need something with a little weight to get into it. And then we're gonna need a spoon just to scoop out our seeds. And we're gonna lay this on a tray. Insert my knife, tip first, and then just pull it down. Flip it over. We got almost all the way through. Just boom. Take a bowl, take a spoon, and scoop out all of the guts and the seeds. Smells like Halloween already. So after we have our seeds scooped out and we have the hollowed out inside, and put it right on a sheet tray like that and bake it. And we're just gonna line up our sheet tray with all of our squash. All these seeds that come out of the pumpkin, those are absolutely not trash. Now, if you guys have a garden, these seeds will grow more pumpkins. Also, they're delicious to eat as well. So what you would do is you would just rinse out all of the strands, pick out the seeds, and then you could roast them in the oven. Just season them with a little bit of olive oil, salt, and pepper, and they come out nice and crunchy and a delicious snack. My house loves to do it. Boom, done. Now for the acorn squash. You guys just wanna be very careful when you're cutting these because the skin is thick, there's no flat part to rest it on, so they're very wobbly vegetables. So make sure you have a good hold on it. That's why I like to go knife tip in first, and then pull down. And now we're just gonna do it the other way. Flip it around, knife tip in, pull down. Boom. This is our acorn squash. Same business. Just scoop out the seeds and the little strands. Time for that butternut. Boom, knife tip in. Pull down, flip it around, same thing. It smells great though. Kinda yeah, that smells does like smell Pandora. good. I thought it smelled like Soren. That's funny. And last but not least, our buttercup squash. You just want to avoid the root. The root is a very hard part, so we're going to start just on the edge of it. Knife tip straight down. Start on this side. Pull it straight down. There we go. Let's scoop the last of our seeds out of here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the root end off of all of our vegetables. The parsnips, the carrots, and the turnips. I'm gonna go ahead and just cut off that root end right there. Peel our sweet potato. All right, once all of our vegetables are trimmed, give it a quick rinse, get any of that excess dirt off there, and then we're ready to start roasting. So the oven's been preheating to 350. I have all of my vegetables prepared. We got our turnips, our parsnips, carrots, and all of our squash. And everything is just gonna get hit with a light drizzle of olive oil and some salt and some pepper. And then it's gonna go in the oven and it's gonna bake until it's about soft. All right, it's time to prepare our sandwich. We got our Granny Smith apple. The tart is good because we have a lot of sweet going on in this dish. We're gonna add a little honey to the sandwich. A lot of our squashes are sweet. So a little bit of tart is gonna add a nice change of pace to this meal. Shave our apples nice and thin. That's a great cut. The Granny Smith, it really adds a lot to this dish. It has a nice crunch to it. It's juicy, it adds a bit of freshness. 
once we hit fall, which is now, that's apple picking season. So a lot of you people who are fortunate enough to live close to your local apple orchards, go on and pick your own apples. This is the best time of the year for it. When I cut the brie, I like to go on the long way so that you have these really nice, beautiful, long pieces of cheese. So guys, if you're unfamiliar with brie, excellent melting cheese. It's nice and soft. Even at room temperature, it's just creamy. I mean, you can see it's almost ready to just fall apart in my hand. Nice and luxurious. The flavor does not compare to any other cheese you've had before. A couple pieces of ham on each piece of bread. Sliced apples right in the middle. Put some nice thick slices of brie on here. Drizzle it with just a little bit of honey. And now we're gonna close it up. And that's our complete sandwich. And now guys, as soon as your soup is ready, we're just gonna go ahead and grill this in a pan or throw it in the oven and toast it just like you would with a grilled cheese until the ham gets warm and the brie gets melty. So guys, we're also gonna go ahead and add arugula to our sandwich, but we're not gonna add the arugula until after we heat it up because I prefer the arugula nice and raw and crunchy still. So we're gonna start working for the base of our soup now. While everything is roasting in the oven, we can start this. I have some garlic and some onions. Give it a rough chop, guys. We don't need to be very precise with this. And the reason is we're gonna blend our whole soup. So we don't need to be fine on our cuts because we're gonna come through with our immersion blender and make sure everything is nice and smooth before we serve it. Garlic cut into that size, perfectly okay. Time for our onion. You just get both ends off, peel the skin, rip its skin off of its body. So this is just a white onion. Nice and easy. Like I said, no need to cut it any further because we're gonna blend it. I got no regrets. Well, you ready to come and get it? Na 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 na. So we have some butter melting in our pot. That this is the pot we're gonna make our soup in. We're gonna go ahead and add our onions and our garlic, and we're just gonna let that slowly cook on a nice low temperature and let the garlic and the onions get soft in the butter. As soon as all of our root vegetables are done, we're gonna take them from the oven, we're gonna put them in this pan with a little bit of milk, and we're gonna blend it, and it's that simple. All right, so our vegetables just finished roasting, and here's how you guys are gonna be able to go ahead and tell they're done. You're just gonna to wanna to check for what we call knife tender, that it can just pierce lightly without much resistance. That's how you know everything is fully cooked. And that took me about an hour at 350 degrees to cook even the thickest things here, like our butternut squash. The skin stays behind, and you can just come in with a spoon and take out all the nice big pieces of meat like that. No problem at all. Yeah. and I took a paring knife and I cut all the other vegetables into manageable size pieces. So here we have our onions, garlic, and butter and that's been cooking down and now we're gonna go ahead and add all of our vegetables to it, right to the pan. We're gonna take whole milk, add enough that all of the vegetables are almost entirely covered. But when we go ahead and puree this, we're gonna see what our consistency looks like and if it's too thick, it's not pureeing well, we can add a little bit more milk and if it's too thin and it's looking runny, then we're just gonna turn our heat up and we're gonna let it reduce down and thicken up. That's what's great about cooking is, no matter what your mistake is, you can always fix it. We're gonna add a considerable amount of salt and pepper. We have a lot of soup here. Those pumpkins, they, they really come with a lot of meat. A very light sprinkling of some cinnamon and some nutmeg. These are gonna help the pumpkins really bring out their nice fall flavors. And it's still gonna be a savory soup, but you're gonna have that slightly sweet spice in the back and it's, it's a great pairing. All right, so here's our immersion blender and we're just gonna go ahead and start getting everything working together. You wanna make sure this is fully submerged because if you have a little bit of it out of the liquid, it'll start spewing stuff everywhere. <laughs> 
If you're gonna take it out, make sure you stop it, start pushing things down. And while I leave it running, I'm moving it around so that it's getting everything in the pan. While our soup is heating up and finishing, we're gonna go ahead and put our sandwiches on a baking sheet and pop them in the 350 degree oven until they're toasted and melty. All right, so all these pumpkins and these root vegetables have a lot of food. I just went ahead and took a little bit out. I'm gonna go ahead and freeze that and I'll enjoy it on a nice cold winter day. Taste what I have left for today. So it definitely needs some more salt, pepper, just a little bit more of everything. I'm gonna put a tiny bit more cinnamon in there. You don't want cinnamon or nutmeg, a little more nutmeg. You don't want them to be overpowering. You just want slight little background notes. I'm gonna add a little bit of sugar. I always wait to add the sugar until the end because sometimes your pumpkins, your butternut squash, it can be very sweet. Sometimes you don't need any sugar, but in this case, I need just a, a little pinch to bring out the sweetness. A tiny little splash of vanilla extract. Whisk that all up and that should be the final touches I need before the soup is complete. Taste the adjustments I made, make sure that's what I want it to be like. Excellent. Great for a nice cold day, seasoned perfectly, and we're gonna go ahead and get our sandwiches and our uh, soup ready. All right, so our soup is finished. Our sandwich just came out of the oven. Nice and crispy. Our cheese is nice and melted and soft, you can see. And add some arugula now that it's done. I don't wanna bake the arugula because then it will be wilted. And that's okay too, but I like it like this. So we have our sandwich done. I'm just gonna cut it on the diagonal, finish. Here's our soup, you guys can see it's the perfect consistency. This is what we call nappe, is that it lightly coats the back of a spoon. And I left mine nice and hearty and chunky. I didn't strain it, so there's gonna be lots of vegetables you feel in there. If you wanted to get fancy with it, you could put this through a strainer, have it nice and smooth. Both ways are good. And now we're just gonna go ahead and garnish our soup. So here I have some pumpkin seeds. Perfect theming for the uh, meal. Here's some dried cranberries. I'll throw some of those in. So we have a little bit of the sweet and chewy. We have a little bit of the crunchy, nutty and earthy. And here's a little bit of freshly picked thyme for some herbaceousness. And these three things together are the perfect garnish. I'm just gonna take a nice pinch of it and put it right in the center of the soup. We got our thyme, we got our pumpkin seeds, we got our cranberries. And all together, it's a delicious bite. The soup is excellent. Nutmeg and the cinnamon really come through very subtly. A great addition to the soup. The sandwich, I already know it's gonna be good. I don't even need to taste it, but I will for you guys. Mmm, oh man, the brie, the apple, the ham, everything comes together so well. The arugula for some pepperiness. I got some nice meltability on the brie, the perfect, fall meal. So guys, go to your local farmers markets, pick up your fresh produce, go to your local apple orchards, pick your own apples, make this delicious fresh meal, and enjoy your nice chilly autumn weather. Thanks for coming back to Chef Sawyer Sundays, and I'll see you guys next week. Cut.